invited me back again. I actually didn't know that I was going to do another Seder. In fact, um, I'll just add a little top around to what Starla said. I actually told God I was not doing another Seder. And then I got an inbox from Starla all of a sudden, I don't know how many months ago it was, a couple months back maybe, saying we voted and we were going to have another Seder. I said, oh. I was like, really, God? But the thing is, is that God has showed me no matter what I'm going through physically or what we're going through in our personal lives, it's just my husband and myself now, um, all our children are dispersed in Washington and Michigan, which I know the Lord is calling us out there, but we guess we'll have to separate and go one way and go the other way. <laughs> anyway, um, I just really appreciate this church being so warm and inviting me here today. And I'd really like to show everybody that's here because each person that gets a deposit of information into their hearts, they will also be able to illuminate their spirit. Yeah. And then from illuminating their spirit, they'll see another person. They'll say, hey, you really should come to a Passover Seder. It's not just about this church, but it's a beginning. This is my, I thought it was my fifth one, but actually, like what you said, it's my sixth one on the mountain. I live in Mentone, and my very first Seder that I actually gave myself was at Mentone Community Church. And in the last two years, they had over 175 people show up. And I was telling the other that one of the um, years, it was the very first year, we had about a week's notice. And you know, that's nearly impossible. But there were so many people that rallied together to make the thing come to pass. Because God is a God of all possibility. So that's why I'm up here. <laughs> and obedience is better than sacrifice. <laughs> Passover is an invitation for Elijah. It's an invitation for him to return a second time. To announce the coming of the Messiah. The gospel of Jesus <laughs> helps us understand that he is the deliverer. As you get ready to celebrate the Passover, the resurrection of our Lamb, the deliverer, be sure to truly rejoice and worship him for the gift he has given. These are a few highlights about why the Passover is not just for the Jews. You remember in the Bible where it says to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. We need to understand that because the Jews were provoked to the point where they weren't they weren't listening to the Lord and um, they were disobedient to a certain extent, then they provoked the Gentiles to come into the kingdom. Passover is a blueprint for understanding the end times. Passover is the gospel in its most primitive form. Did any of you know that? It is the gospel in its most primitive form. The Passover lamb was a symbol and a shadow of <coughs> Jesus. Pharaoh was a shadow of Satan. Two witnesses will call down plagues in the end times, just like Moses and Aaron did in Egypt. The plagues local to Egypt in Moses' day will be global in the end times. Yeah. Hail, in Exodus 9, 18 through 35, is a foreshadowing of Revelation 16:21. Frogs in Exodus 8, 1 through 15 is a foreshadowing of Revelation in 16, 13. Passover is a season for all people to remember their freedom and deliverance. Moses is a type and shadow of freeing his people from bondage as Jesus freed us from our sins. God makes no mistakes. Darkness in Exodus 10, 21 through 29 is a foreshadowing of Revelation 6, 12. Death in Exodus 11, 1 through 10 is a foreshadowing of Revelation in 6, 7 through 8. The church will be on earth during many of these plagues. The parting of the Red Sea for Israel is a symbol of the rapture. Did anyone think about that? As Israel was delivered by the blood of the Lamb, we too are delivered by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus is the substance of all God's appointed feasts. Jesus is referred to the Lamb of God 
29 times in the book of Revelation. By looking at the Passover, we will begin to understand Revelations. The feasts in the book of Exodus were a foreshadowing of events to come. Yeshua, Jesus, is the fulfillment of the Passover. This is not a one-time celebration, but a commemoration given by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob for all time. Leviticus 23, 2-7 states this, and Exodus 12 and 14. Passover is the most important feast to our Lord. On the 14th day of the first month at twilight is the Lord's Passover. These feasts, this is God speaking, these feasts are of the Lord. They are a holy convocation which you shall proclaim at their appointed times. This is found in Leviticus 23.4. So I hope that all of you here today will think about perhaps getting your ticket. And the only reason that Pastor, like Pastor Kyle mentioned, the only reason that we get the ticket and Starla mentioned is because we're going to buy the food. And we're going to do our best, my husband and I, to prepare for you a Passover feast. So you are all welcome and welcome at the Lord's Supper.